What's up everyone? Welcome back to Frame of Mind. If you haven't, make sure you like and subscribe to stay up to date for all of the latest videos. So this week I had the pleasure of talking to Dr. Nuwan Gunavardhana, or Nui as his friends call him. Nui recently completed his residency in internal medicine and just began his fellowship program in infectious disease. From his travels to the rural parts of Sri Lanka to volunteering in Haiti where he treated patients from infants to the geriatric population, Nui has always had an interest in global health. Nui shared with me his journey and passion into medicine and helping others and what it's been like on the front lines for a doctor during the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you again. Seriously, seriously, thank you so much for doing this. I know you were so busy and I really appreciate you talking to me. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Well, okay, so for people that don't know you, um, do you just want to like say a little bit about um, your background and what you currently do and what you're um, studying and working on now? My name is Nuan Ganawardhana. I'm a infectious disease fellow, um, born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, my passion is infectious diseases with uh, global health. And so that's what I'm pursuing right now. And that's what I'm training in right now. How did you decide infectious disease? Because I don't know how common that is for people to go into. Um, and like, was there something in your background that kind of drew you towards global health and, you know, then infectious disease? Um, so going into medicine, I went into internal medicine. Um, you know, when you first start off in medicine, like after med school, you, you pick your, your field. Um, I chose internal medicine because after internal medicine, you can specialize into a number of different fields from there. Um, and I wanted those options. So I chose internal medicine. My first rotation in residency was infectious diseases, <laughs> coincidentally. And, um, Love at first sight. <laughs> love at first sight, really, yeah. And I asked, I remember asking my attendant, I said, why did you, why do you love infectious diseases? And he said, well, actually simply because I can actually cure things. Um, you know, in medicine, it's not always curing, you know, diseases. It's kind of, um, you know, making things less worse for people sometimes. It can, it's, it's healing, but it's not always a cure. Mm -hmm. um, infectious diseases, you can give antibiotics and you can cure someone. Um, Interesting. Yeah. And so that I really thought about that for a long time. And then I, uh, I spoke to one of my other attendings kind of during my second year of residency, and I told him what I was interested in, in global health. I didn't know that I was going to go into infectious diseases at the time, but I really wanted to go into global health. And he told me I should think about infectious diseases. So I did my research and, you know, lo and behold, 70% of what you see in, uh, you know, when you're practicing global health is secondary to infectious ideology, to infectious ideology. So I put two and two together and, you know, I fell in love with it. And I said, you know, I love infectious diseases in general um, from the get go. So I think this is going to be my career path. So um, I decided to stick with that. And now I'm uh, in it. Yeah. And now you're like, you're in it during a pandemic, right? Like studying infectious disease. I feel like now more than ever, we need more people to be going into this. Um, exactly. Do you, do you, are there a lot of uh, like doctors and other med students? Is this like a popular field? Um. I think, you know, it's, it's a field, I think people are very, you don't, you don't go into infectious diseases for the money. Um, mm -hmm. It's not one of the fields that, you know, within medicine that, you know, has a high compensation. You do it because you're passionate about it. Um, and I think, you know, in medicine in general, you should, whichever field you pick, you should always do it for the passion, not for the money. Um, and I know in, within infectious diseases, people are really, really passionate about it. Um, so you kind of have to love it to go into it. And from the people that I've worked with, they're all very, very passionate about it. 
Um, and they're all very enthusiastic about it. And I think that's what makes a great doctor. Could you ever imagine that you would be on the front lines of a pandemic, um, uh, like basically working, you know, to figure out this new infectious disease of, of sorts that has like spread throughout the world? I mean, I'm sure like you probably never imagined that you would be on the front lines of this, right? No, no one ever expected this <laughs> yeah. uh, pandemic once in a hundred years to hit. And I didn't expect to be infectious diseases during a pandemic uh, five yeah. years ago. But this is where I'm at. <laughs> and I'm actually very grateful to be in this field um, to be able to make a difference and to be able to help people. Um, everyone, not only infectious diseases, but everyone in every specialty in medicine um, not only physicians, but nurses, respiratory therapists, um, and just the general staff at the hospital, we all make a difference um, in different ways. And we can't do our jobs without each other. So um, being in medicine during this time has definitely impacted a lot of us mm -hmm. in different ways, in positive and negative ways. But we're all in it together and you know we can't always get what we want you know in these situations what is the experience like as a physician or just you know your other co-workers and nurses working in the hospitals on the front line every day like what is it like for you emotionally and mentally uh when the pandemic first hit <clears throat> back um when we first started getting our first patients um that i saw which was back in march it was completely eerie mm -hmm. i didn't really know what to expect and we didn't have any knowledge of the uh of the virus back then and so i don't know you were just kind of like i remember going to my first room and it was very eerie as in i didn't know what to expect no one else knew what to expect. And I was being extremely, extremely cautious of everything that I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, and now I've seen so many COVID patients that looking backwards, you know, it's amazing how much we didn't know and how much we know now. We still don't know a lot. I mean, we still, we know a lot, but we still don't know you know, everything about the virus. And we don't know, you know, things going forward too. So that's, time can only tell. And, you know, with the immense amount of research that we have going on, um, I'm excited to see where we'll be at in a year or two, and even 10 years. Um, back in the 80s, we had our own little pandemic, um, our own little uh, pandemic with um, HIV. Mm -hmm. and, um, a lot of the physicians that, you know, are a little bit older now, they dealt with that in the 80s. And this is kind of like our generation, too. Uh, this is, you know, our experience with this pandemic. Um, and they didn't know much back then with HIV when it first hit. And it's crazy how HIV back then was a death sentence. Yeah. And and now it's, you know, it can be managed as a chronic disease that, you know, if you're taking your medications every day, you're less likely to, you know, pass away from an HIV related illness than, you know, something else like cardiovascular disease or diabetes, you know. Um, once the world comes together and does research and, you know, put their heads together, it's amazing how much you know you know we can accomplish so much has changed and we you know medications have changed management has changed it was before it was all about early intubation and now um you know we had limited knowledge back then and now you know we reserve intubation you know more of like a last not last resort but you know something that we do, you know, if they're really decompensating fast and, you know, you have less 
you know, less things to work with. Um, but, you know, we have the vaccine now, which is, was just approved. Um, I got my vaccination the other day and I didn't really experience much side effects, just little soreness to where the injection site was, which is the most common side effect um, that's reported. And, you know, mine, I was actually this shoulder. I thought it was this one, but it was actually this <laughs> one. I don't muscle soreness anymore. So that was it. Um, and we can yeah, only- Congrats on getting the vaccine. That's amazing that I'm, you know, you're one of the people that are on the front lines and you're one of the first groups of people to get it and it, how did you feel getting the vaccine? I didn't even feel it going in. <laughs> um, but it was an amazing experience. Uh, just getting that vaccine that, you know, we have been hoping for and planning for. Yeah. It. Uh, this is like our chance to come back, you know, and, you know, grab this, this, uh, this disease, this virus, and, you know, get a grip of it and move forward finally. Um, I think that's our, this is like our major chance of coming back now and hopefully more people will get vaccinated and they will trust science and they will yeah. trust evidence-based medicine and, you know, not hold into, you know, misinformation and rumors that are circulating, you know, trust your physicians, trust evidence-based medicine, um, because these aren't just theories or anything these are you know medication and vaccines are done in a clinical setting they're researched in clinical settings they're um there's evidence to back, back it up basically so um trust yeah, and like, have you noticed just like just with you know patients you've been treating um and you know i'm sure you've seen people with varying degrees of um symptoms and varying stages but uh, is it or is has it changed now like is it not as like alarming anymore now that like we know more and there's a vaccine or do you or, or is it still kind of the same feeling every time you're dealing with COVID patients or do you feel like you guys have more you feel like you have more of a grip on what's going on well cases are rising now and I think people are just getting kind of just tired of it, which mm -hmm. can't happen, unfortunately, uh, but it's happening. And I know like, even I get really tired, you know, just practicing, you know, where we have to practice, but you know, I don't, as in like, we're in a mass, social distance, you know, you get tired, but yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, of course. that's human, um, but we have to. Otherwise, we're not only putting ourselves in danger, but you're putting your loved ones in danger. You're putting your neighbors in danger. I'm putting my, I would put my patients in danger. Mm -hmm. So I practice um, what we need to practice so that, you know, I can protect everyone, including myself. There's modifiable risk factors and there's non-modifiable risk factors. The non-modifiable risk factors. Ah, the non-modifiable <laughs> risk factors are like your genetics, but the modifiable risk factors are things you can control, like your diet and exercise, taking, I mean, you know, going to your primary care physician um, and being able to reduce these uh, risk factors because they will always give you guidance and, you know, teach you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Um, and like it really comes down to the basic to, be, to the basics that we all know we should practice but we don't <laughs> it's it's easy to you know just get off track with your diet and but just taking care of like supplementing correctly you know making sure you're getting enough vitamins minerals eating healthy sleeping well like reducing your stress all of these things contribute to having a strong immune system absolutely um, and absolutely. is there is there one thing that um, like, what would, what would you say is one of the biggest things that you have learned just working during this pandemic? Whew. Like either lot. about yourself or just about, you know, people coming together in general. Yeah, there's a lot that I've learned during this pandemic. But I think the main thing is staying positive. 
because there's a lot going on right now mm-hmm. and there's a especially this year has been a huge downer for everyone mm-hmm. um but you know you can always look at the glass you know half empty or you can look at it half full I always choose to look at a half full, be thankful for what you have, be thankful for the people who are in your lives, uh, be grateful. Um, and, you know, enjoy the relationships with the people that you have. Um, Cause they're not, you know, they might not all, you know, be there forever, mm-hmm. especially during this pandemic. You know, we've learned a lot of people have loved, have lost their loved ones have lost people that, you know, they've known for a long period of time, but. Yeah, and they can't even necessarily be with them too, which is, that's what's even more heartbreaking about this. Yeah, it's divided, you know, it's it's put us, you know, it's distanced us a lot. Um, it's secluded a lot of people too. Um, I mean, I'm, I just go to work and I come home. I don't do anything really. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I go running, but that's pretty much it. Um, I used to, you know, go to restaurants and, you know, like you, you know, enjoy our life. Um, yeah, our social and all of that has changed this year. I, I know you have done, you did some work in Sri Lanka and Haiti. And so like kind of going back to global health and you traveling and getting to have these experiences, um, just tell me kind of what was your experience like going over to a, you know, a third world country and actually being on the front lines there and working the patients. I haven't done too much in Sri Lanka. I've done more. I did, I went, I did a medical trip to Haiti. Um, Haiti was an experience that I will never forget. Um, I went there during, it was April, 2019. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to go a little bit earlier, but there was some, um, some political things that were going on during that time and it was unsafe for us to go. So we had to cancel our trip. Um, We had a little pocket of time that we found uh, moving forward from there and it was safe. It was deemed safe to go during that time. Mm -hmm. So the group that I I uh, went with the organization, you know, they reached out to back out to me and my, actually my roommate at the time mm-hmm. during residency. And they said, you know, are you still interested in going? Um, given the fact that it still might be a little dangerous, but, you know, we're doing this, you know, to help people. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And so we ended up going. Um, it was six hours away from Port-au-Prince. Okay. Where we practiced and it was like in a small, small rural village in the, like near like the hills in Haiti, um, in a very rural, rural area. And we saw up to 200 patients a day between five or six of us. Um, and you saw really anything that walked into the door, meaning, so I, I did my residency in internal medicine, which is 18 and up. Um, in these situations you're the only physician there so you saw everything meaning children uh, you know infants um, and you treated everything like different fields too Um, but I mean I you always do whatever you're comfortable with and you ask with you know others around you your teammates uh, in situations that you're uncomfortable with but it puts you in a position of discomfort, which is actually a great motivator. Um, and it makes you trust your gut. Um, and it kind of helps you grow as a, not only as a physician, but as a person, because you need to have confidence in yourself and you need to have confidence in your skills. Um, over there, we didn't really have much internet. So we had to bring our books. Um, so you kind of Google something quickly, right? You have to go back to your book and look it up. You have to look up things. <laughs> um, you know, it, I mean, in medicine, we always, you know, working in like an academic setting, you have, you're working in a multidisciplinary 
setting. So you have a pharmacist with you, you have nurses with you, you have respiratory therapists with you. Over there, we didn't have the privilege to be working in a setting like that. So you had to, you know, we had some uh, people that were trained in pharmacy, but you had to also kind of figure things out yourself. So it puts you in situations where you're uncomfortable, but like I said, you grow from it and you trust your judgment and trust your skills. So yeah, that must have been such like an amazing experience, like getting to treat patients of all different ages and you were probably seeing, you know, different, like, like what kind of um, issues were you seeing? Like, was it kind of the same thing or were there a lot of different um, ailments that were these people were dealing with? Um, so like I was saying earlier, uh, a lot of these situations are secondary to infectious etiologies. So I dealt with a lot of infections. Um, I dealt with trauma, uh, people coming in with, you know, neck lacerations, uh, open depressed uh, skull fractures, um, people that are bleeding out. Um, and in some of those situations, we couldn't handle it in our clinic and we had to send them out to, you know, uh, to the ER that was kind of a long ways away. But, you know, that was their best, in that, that situation, that was their best chance of survival. So we stabilized them as much as we could. And we, you know, sent them on their way with transportation that we tried to arrange um, so that they can get there as safe as possible. Um, and, you know, I dealt with, you know, the elderly, geriatrics, geriatric population, a lot of things that, you know, people are just coming in with mm -hmm. just kind of complaining with broad complaints like I have stomach pain or I have yeah I can't breathe um, and you kind of you don't so you're working in resource resource limited areas and you know like I was saying you have to trust your judgment so you don't have x-rays you don't have you know blood tests you don't have lab values and so you have to kind of improvise at that moment and wow. figure yeah, um, it was an amazing experience, and I you know, encourage everyone in medicine to try and you know, you know, pursue these um, medical trips if they can. It's very, uh, it's a it's this experience that you will never forget, and you will grow as a person um, and as a clinician. So that's what I want to actually do. Uh, in my future as well. Uh, when you left that trip um, in Haiti, did that just like solidify yeah. sort of everything? Like you're like, did, like I know that I'm making the right decision. Did you feel like that? It did. I didn't want to leave. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, there's like situations where, you know, you're there and it kind of feels like you're taking an ice pick to a glacier because you're not, you know, you can treat so many people, but there's so many more other people that need help. And, mm -hmm. um, but you know, there's different fields within global health where you can make a larger impact, but you know, every life that you're impacting is also an amazing um, accomplishment for them. Is there something that you would you do or any advice you would give maybe to other people that are on the front lines of, th of this um like any tips or things that you do just to kind of cope with everything that you have to deal with mentally because i know you guys are seeing and dealing with so much more than the rest of us because you're actually on the front lines of these things and it must get a lot to deal with mentally uh yeah medicine right now can be very draining um mm -hmm. But we're all in it. We're all doing it. And I think what really helps is actually camaraderie. Um, camaraderie within, you know, with the people that you work with. And also, you know, you know, talking to strangers and kind of making some kind of social connection with people. Being able to be human and talking to people always helps. I know it helps me to just vent to my friends and vent to my colleagues. Um, and they do the same to me and I think it, I don't know, it kind of creates a bond connection and you're in it together. So 
And then also have like an outlet for stress, I think is very important. Mm -hmm. I like to exercise. Uh, I've been bad about it recently just because um, work's been, you know, more hectic these days with, you know, the pandemic raging. But when I do get time, it completely, you know, revamps me and sleep also is very, very important. Oh, yes. Sleep is definitely an important one. Personally, how do you feel every day, you know, when you get up and you go to the hospital and you are working with these patients? Um, like, do you feel very grateful that you are a part of this or do you feel overwhelmed? Do you feel scared? Kind of how do you feel now and how do you think looking back, do you think you're going to feel any different in 10 years when, you know, this thing has kind of, the dust has settled a little bit? I feel grateful to be part of, the, uh, be, to be a part of, you know, a, I don't know. I feel grateful to be a part of something that will really make a difference um, moving forward and then also looking back. Um, yeah, it can be scary at times, but it's, you know, I'm where I am today because I feel like I'm meant to be where I am today. And um, just, this is just so crazy. I don't know that if, like, I never would imagine it, it is kind of like you feel like it's something out of a movie that you're thinking about, like, oh, I'm just, I lived 2020 majority of this year, like three months into the year. We were hit by a global pandemic. Like, everyone's lives turned upside down. People's, incomes changed people lost loved ones like it is completely different and it's going to be different and it's it's crazy just you know like all of us have experienced it in our own ways and I, especially for you being on the front lines and literally treating people and also your specialty is infectious disease so like you're in it a hundred percent like that must be just like such an i don't know like crazy exhilarating experience it definitely has been uh, seeing the evolution of this, you know, from what we didn't know to now having, you know, treatments to having a vaccine. It's it's amazing to be a part of that, and I am forever grateful to be part of this um, part of history and to be able to make a difference. So, um, but you know, uh, it's a crazy time to be alive right now I, the least I can say yeah I think everyone can uh, agree with that and just lastly do you have any just as a doctor as a physician do you have any advice that you would you know ask someone who got the vaccine and has been working is there anything that you would say to patients or to people trust science trust evidence-based medicine and don't fall into the rabbit hole of misinformation mm -hmm. um People have dedicated their lives and their careers in this field. Um, and this is all backed up by not just, you know, things that are circulating around the internet, but this is backed up by, you know, clinical trials. So mm -hmm. have trust in science because, you know, we are where we are today because of science. Yeah, I mean, thank you so much for like all of your hard work and everything you've been doing through this whole pandemic. Like, because of people like you, you know, we can, we have trust that there's smart doctors and physicians out there working as hard as possible to treat patients and treat all our loved ones. And, you know, you guys go through so much like physically and mentally and emotionally. So, you know, really a big thank you to all that you do every day. I'm happy to help.